Once again, good morning and good afternoon to everyone who have logged in. Uh, so we are here today to, to present to you uh, an important uh, topic for discussion. We have a, panel, a group of panel that is going to be talking about this topic, the new norm for tourism protocols in the Bahamas. I'm Vignesh Varanaya. Um, I will moderate the session. So as we begin the session, uh, I'm going to baseline the discussion on the, the, the current trends that is happening across the globe with regards to the pandemic before we start discussing uh, the issue in the Bahamas and how do we move forward. So we have three uh, speakers uh, who will be addressing some of the topics that, of discussion today. We have Ms. Janet Johnson, the CEO of uh, CEO and the Executive Director of Tourism Development Corporation. We also have Mr. Craig Mortimer, the Manager from the Tourism Development Corporation. And also we have uh, Ms. Denise Johnson, who is the CEO and President of the Hospitality Group Limited and also the Bahamas Association of uh, Shaw Experience or Base. So uh, each one of them will actually give their view in 10 minutes uh, on, the, on the issue that we are facing currently in the Bahamas. So let me first uh, begin to tell you that uh, just a few housekeeping. Uh, be informed that this session is being recorded. So all your microphones have been muted. At the end of the presentation, you can raise your question by raising your hand if you want to ask a question directly, or you can put your question in the chat box. We will try our best to get to uh, as many questions, but I know the time is limited. At the same time, we are also aware today the Prime Minister is giving his address at 1 p.m. So I think we are trying our best to complete the session by 1 if possible. So we are trying to complete the presentation within half an hour so that you have more time for discussion. Um, in order to control the, the bandwidth of the presentation, uh, I am requesting all to not to use your video because the bandwidth have been quite poor of late ever since the power cut. And uh, so if you don't see the video of the presenter, it's because of uh, we're trying to ensure that the audio is clear and the presentation file is, is clear. So without further ado, uh, let me first quickly go through to go through the, uh, the baseline of our discussion today. As we move, as we move into this new norm, there are a lot of protocols that we need to observe in the Bahamas. So let's look at how did we get to where we are today and how is this affecting our industry? How are we evolving? How are we going to evolve? And what should we be doing during this transition period? How do we move forward? Because there is going to be a new norm post COVID-19. Over the last many weeks uh, on months, in fact, since early March, I've been attending a lot of webinars. In fact, I've been attending more webinars the last two months compared to the last 10 years. And, um, and a lot of these webinars related to tourism and the recovery of tourism, what do you do about it? So I have, uh, based on many of the webinars that I've attended, I've baselined some of the discussion here based on extract that I've taken from many of these webinars. So if you look at what is happening across the globe now from where we started when we first heard about COVID-19 uh, in, in mid-January. Uh, so if you look at the, the, the whole world map, the focus at that point was very much in China, in Wuhan, China with 5,578 cases. Then within a month or so in March, the number crossed to 102,000 above with more countries uh, in Europe and across uh, Asia getting infected. By April, we see 1.9 million, almost 2 million, including the US. And then today, 14 May, the number have gone to 4.3 million. So that is how uh, wide this uh, pandemic and has, has moved on from where it started. So if we look at, uh, what we have here, as far as pandemic is concerned, is not something new. Okay, we had this almost a century ago, okay, when we had the Spanish flu. 
and then now exactly almost 100 years we have the COVID-19. So we have some experience to actually understand how this pandemic actually works. So, so we need to be, we need to understand that there are waves in pandemics. And normally there are two main waves that happen in, from what we have learned from the Spanish flu. So COVID-19 pandemic is unlikely to be any different. So, uh, Basically, what it means to say is this is going to be here for a while. So we need to be prepared to withstand this. At the same time, we need to be prepared to move on in a new norm. The previous disease, uh, right from SARS to avian flu, the mass, uh, the widespread was not too great. Within one or two, one to three months, uh, you see the recovery happening. But for what you see that's happening in COVID-19, it's slightly different. There are a lot of businesses that will be facing uphill challenges post COVID-19. The cruise industry, the airline, all the other suppliers, restaurants, cinema, the gym chain, entertainment in the retails, theme parks. These are some of the main businesses that need to revamp or change into a new norm if they want to survive uh, post COVID-19. So tourism destinations are deserted uh, all across the globe. It is going to take longer, than, longer time than many actually think. The airlines are shutting down. Many of the airlines are going burst. A lot of the airlines are also being grounded. So this is uh, something that is really seriously impacting the industry. Singapore Airport recently closed Terminal 2 for 18 months. They are one of the most busiest airports in the world. The cruise ship industry is being impacted severely so there is going to be a new norm even in the in, even in the cruise industry in order for the industry to actually survive so will we ever take cruise holidays again will will there be a change in the travel habits there is going to be a change there is going to be a new norm that is going to be taking shape post covid 19 health pandemic versus economic pandemic how do we find the balance health pandemic have created an economic pandemic. So we have contained it well for the moment, but at the same time, we need to move on. How do we withstand this pandemic and how do we move on to this new norm? So uh, studies from uh, APCO worldwide uh, have predicted some future travel post pandemic. Okay, they have done uh, uh, sufficient studies uh, looking at some of the trends that is happening across the globe over the last three months. From, this, from their study, they have actually predicted two major themes, uh, travel motivators and industry improve, improvement that needs to be happening and also the way how travel destinations are going to actually uh, come up with their new products. So based on their studies, the focus seemed to be very much on three main things. The traveler health and safety is going to be key before someone decides to move on or someone decide to even come to your destination. Family travel, VFR, visiting family and friends and domestic tourism is going to be key. Travel sales, promotion and deals is going to be key before you can even attract. So that is the finding from this study showed. So what do we need to do now to prepare for the future? Understand the travel pattern change that is happening. Hospitality and tourism job will have to evolve the way how it functions. Technology is going to become critical. The safety and health standard is going to become a norm that we need to follow. So let me quickly glance through some of the photographs here before we, we, we call the first uh, presentation. So innovation is going to be key in the industry. Some jobs will no longer exist in the future. Technology have to replace because you're trying to reduce the direct uh, touch contacts, moving to a, a tech contact. Innovations is going to bring new ways of how we are going to actually be functioning in this industry. What will the future look like? You see some changes that are already happening across the globe. The way how you check in right from the hotel is going to change as well. The future of the hospitality industry or hospitality is the hotels going to be doubled up as also a hospital? 
So there are a lot of talks on that as well. Housekeeping, how is this going to change? So technology is the way forward for all, uh, uh, for the benefit of this industry. If the industry is going to function more efficiently, we have no choice but to really invest in this technology. Security was the main uh, focus of airport for the last 20 years, okay? Ever since September 11, it has been security all the way. But if you look at now, the health is a new focus across the globe. Your in-flight service is going to have a new feel and new look, and this is going to be the post-COVID environment. Visitor arrivals, how are you going to manage visitor arrival? Social distancing is going to become norm as part and parcel of our everyday life. You already see changes happening across the globe, including here in the Bahamas. So we are getting used to, to, the, to lining up and going into to, uh, to outlets uh, in, in an orderly manner. Even when we order food, everything seems to be going online or you distance yourself in, in trying to get your food. Or where we sit, whether it's in a, in a, in a, in a restaurant or whether it's, in, a, it's in, a, in the plane, whether it's going to be in the cruise, wherever. So there is going to be a new norm. Health certificate to travel. This may be the way forward as well. Travel essentials. Every individual may need some health essentials when they travel. And this is going to become another new norm. Biometric check-in. Biometric face recognition boarding. All this is going to transform the industry. Face recognition immigration. This is another technology that is already being worked on. So the future of the hospitality and, and, and tourism job is going to very much focus on few pillars here. The health, the trust, the management, the customer interaction, and the use of technology. So the implication for you, health and sanitation, you have to be aware. You need to think of this in the industry, whatever that you're doing. Technology is part and parcel of the future. If you're not into technology, you will be irrelevant. Working remotely, how do you efficiently work remotely? Because you do not have the chance to work face to face. So how do you become more efficient in your operation? How are you going to adapt to this situation? Because this virus is going to be here. And before you know it, you may get another pandemic coming. So you cannot be hiding away uh, for too long. Work has to go on. The economy has to move on. So the new normal framework uh, for the tourism industry is very much focusing on health and safety. Uh, how do you ensure that the community uh, across the globe are assured of their safety. The community must be committed because if the community is not committed to this health and safety, then it is going to fail. The communities must have a clear standard. That is the role of the government now to produce a clear standard. We need to establish guidelines for all visitors. We need to improve uh, the the standards for safety and health in terms of social distancing, right from the restaurants to the airports to the airlines, how do we manage that efficiently? So we may be tired of being this under this lockdown uh, and work needs to go on in a new environment. So this is something that needs to happen uh, across the globe. So how do we return to normal? Do we just want to go back to more tourism or do we want to ensure that the new tourism that we're going to talk about is going to create a better world? So this is basically to give you a quick snapshot of what is happening across the globe. And now we're going to discuss what should be the new norm for tourism protocols in the Bahamas. So I would like to now first call upon um, our first presenter, uh, Ms. Janet Johnson, 
CEO and the Executive Director from Tourism Development Corporation uh, to share her screen so she can present uh, her, uh, her thoughts on this topic. Janet? All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, listening in on this presentation. Uh, we've, I've titled this Preparing for the New Norm. Um, it's going to be, it's just a few slides and I'll give you, I'll give a, a, a broad brush of, of what the Tourism Development Corporation has been engaged with uh, during this process, both pre-COVID and also during the, during the crisis. And so I'd like to first acknowledge that we did a lot of things right at the beginning. We battened down, um, uh, closed the borders, we closed non-essential businesses, um, and we all experienced a, uh, an aggressive nationwide lockdown. And luckily, we had, uh, for the benefit of the Bahamas, uh, two medical doctors at the helm uh, to guide us through the process to, 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 to bring comfort and assurance. And uh, I think that has, that has made a lot of the world of difference. Um, our geographical uh, layout has also been a benefit to the Bahamas. Um, during the process, uh, uh, through the, the various groups, uh, chat groups that I manage, um, I would get the odd private airplane landing. Uh, Bahamians vigilant as ever at the airport with their camera phones, taking note and, and making commentary. Um, and also those who are on the shore, uh, looking at sailing boats and yachts that had, had, dis had decided to remain in the Bahamas and were traversing the waters as, as, as they stayed here. And so obviously uh, citizens were told to protect their shores and, and they certainly did that. And so with those uh, notices coming through, they were obviously shared with the authorities. I was able to alert them to whatever was happening and they, uh, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, would obviously go and inspect and, 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 and assure the authorities. And so being a small organization, um, obviously the vision for our corporation was that it, it was to be a very proactive. Um, it was to, to it is, is because it's very small, it's also quite nimble, um, able to turn it on a dime. Um, very business oriented because our key stakeholders are the entrepreneurs, and very responsive so that we can respond to situations in the marketplace in real time. And so this is one of the reasons why we're able to bring this webinar to you. Um, and uh, this is one in a series of, of webinars that uh, the TDC is going to be um, offering in conjunction with the, our partner, the um, University of the Bahamas. And so, during the process, we, we've been engaging with entrepreneurs um, through our customer relationship management system. Um, our staff, my staff, have been making contact with, with, with various entrepreneurs, um, gathering information, recording that data, um, talking about crisis management, asking them, um, and, and also sharing information and suggestions, recommendations for what they ought to be looking at and, and um, considering to try and shore up their businesses, moving operations off online, offering curbside service, boosting their uh, websites so that individuals are able to see whatever products and uh, that, that they have to offer so that their purchases can be made. Um, and also looking to partnerships and, and business opportunity guidance, um, giving, giving them guidance on, on, on what the opportunities are out there for their businesses in this new paradigm so that they're able to operate. I mean, a lot of uh, the restaurants uh, were doing uh, the deliver, um, we're not, we're, we're doing the delivery. The food stores weren't at that time. And then that sprung up. 
Um, and so there was an opportunity to, there was a scooter company that, that, um, that's one of our uh, clients and uh, the scooter uh, operators were, were not engaged um, and obviously drawing uh, funds from the government and, and the business. And so I, we, we managed to put a uh, restaurant um, service company, Uber type company, in touch with them, and now those 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 gentlemen are now buzzing around the island making deliveries. Uh, so there's that, and then of course there's the Bahamas Association of Shore Experiences, which Denise is going to talk about, and 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 she's going to represent today. Um, this is a new organization that the TDC is. Uh, facilitating and we uh, it, it's an organization where all tourism entrepreneurs uh, are going to be invited to to participate and become a part of, of, of what we're offering so that their uh, stakeholders are supported um, as they should be so in our during 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 the the lockdown we were we took on a counseling role obviously there was a lot of information coming through from the government um, uh, on social media. Um, we have within our purview about six chat groups um, in the Bahamas, uh, Andros, Eleuther, Zuma, Nassau, and uh, Bimini. And uh, we have been uh, working very, very closely with them, making sure that they're well informed, sharing the, the government notices and also helping them to navigate the, the different resources that were available to them um, and helping them to get through the red tape. A number of people had sent things in that uh, and not hearing back and so we would step into the breach and help to facilitate that. Um, very, very uh, helpfully. We also, um, for those local organizations that were doing webinars that we thought were useful for tourism entrepreneurs, we promoted those and encouraged them to be a part of it. Um, and the feedback coming back from those individuals that took the time to participate and to listen and um, was that, you know, th this was the first time that they'd ever done that. Um, and uh, they learned a lot. And they were very, very pleased that the TDC had uh, had reached out to them and asked them to to take advantage of these situations. Also, so with the customer relationship management, we've just purchased a new system, um, which will, will record um, and uh, the data of our uh, clients. And so we're we're cultivating new relationships and ensuring that we're providing a, a, an excellent service to the entrepreneurs that we have within our purview. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing an, an audit. Um, we, well, we're in the, in the process of doing an audit, and this is, the, is a part of that process. And so I just wanted to share that. I'll speak um, in a short while about the Sustainable um, Tourism Certified uh, uh, checklist that, that, that we'll also be doing. So we'll be monitoring the platforms. We, 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 we listen to all of the pressers, both locally and internationally. We have a Google feed that gives us um, lots of articles on different things, um, all the cable channels. We keep abreast of what's going on there. And then we also participate in various webinars that are being featured um, on, the, uh, on the internet. Um, so, so quite frankly, the TDC during this process has, has kind of been the lifeline to tourism um, in, within the consumer community because we've been out there uh, giving of our all and making sure that the, making sure that the um, consumer is being given the attention and that they that they require during this process and so the sustainable tourism certified checklist is something that we started in late december over the christmas new year holiday it 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 came out of the the the, the 
aftermath of, of Hurricane Dorian and what the discerning customer was looking for. Um, the fact that the visitor wants accreditation, wants to see accreditation for tours and attractions that they're going to purchase. And so we did a deep dive into the whole uh, sustainable tourism certified situation. And um, we examined what different jurisdictions were doing um, around the world and how they were making their tourist destination even more competitive. And we pulled the best practices that we thought would apply here in the Bahamas and created a document um, that uh, we are working with one of the international partners um, to see how we can make that available to the industry. Um, the certification is, is such that um, a visitor coming into the country, seeing the accreditation would wish to, um, would be confident in making the purchase um, and knowing that that uh, company has been assessed. Now, COVID-19 adds a, another layer to that. As uh, Dr. Vickers said, um, the health uh, pandemic uh, uh, has, has, has made an impression on the travel industry, a, a huge groove. Um, and so we expect that, and, and we should expect the, the, that that's gonna be a part of the certification as well. You know, how the uh, company has, has, has adjusted to the new norm and how are they, what are they doing? What are, what are the sanitation, hygiene, what, what sanitation using to, to ensure that their customers are safe and that they're um, offering the best product. Yeah, then you may want to speed up because uh, we've already got 15 minutes. Sure, okay. okay. So um, in short, what we want to do is uh, obviously to promote domestic tourism. Um, I, I, I don't really uh, um, relish getting on a plane at the moment. I'm quite happy to stay home and visit some of our islands and have a, a, a nice experience here. Um, leveraging our partnerships, uh, the champions in, in the islands that have looked after the, uh, the family islands, the second homeowners that want to come back, getting them involved in a social enterprise to help the islands, the light manufacturers who have, uh, who have um, created the face masks and, and the face shields, encouraging uh, innovation and uh, helping to, to get more Bahamians involved in the process. Um, in light of domestic travel, uh, by a Buy Bahamian Festival and a very aggressive campaign this summer um, to get bah Bahamians to buy Bahamian and support local and keep the money circulating in the, in the economy. And for our part to, to create some, some Zoom uh, Why Tourism Matters sessions like this, uh, maybe once a month uh, to get those going. And of course, to integrate the tourism uh, this, the sustainable tourism checklist. Uh, promoting the linkages. Um, the Hyatt just recently said that they're gonna lay off 40% of their staff. Well, those people are gonna be coming out with severance packages. What are they gonna do with those severance packages? How are we gonna help them to make the best decisions and to help to support the tourism industry and to have a, um, a, a livelihood that, that supports them? Um, we need to do, a, we need to look at all of the islands and share the information where the gap analysis is um, for those businesses that could fill the, the, the gap and, and plug the, 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 the industry so that we're offering all sorts of different types of businesses to support the tourism industry. Agro-tourism, um, this is a growing trend, um, very popular in the Caribbean and all over Europe. And so, and Southeast Asia, obviously. And so this is something that we want to see happen here. I know talking to a lot of people um, during this process, they want to um, have backyard farm, um, um, gardens and things. So those are springing up all over and that's good to see. 
um, the tips and, and clips for the tourism healthcare and everything in our chat groups and to reinforce the po post COVID um, protocols at all levels and support the industry. So um, our KPIs, the, the key uh, indicators um, for success are so diversification. So one door closes, another one opens. And I'm thinking there of the, of the individuals that, that are coming into a, a situation where they want, they may wish to, to be um, uh, self-employed and to go into business. Um, we're here to help and to guide. Um, we're promoting domestic tourism. The boutique hotels, um, small hotels, we, we, we found that during the, uh, during the process that they were not considered uh, small, medium um, enterprises. Um, they, we, need the, the, we need our, our authorities to look at uh, the, that classification um, because they were not able to get any, any help. Um, to broaden the tourism worker classification. Um, I know that a number of people that work in the tourism field and our stakeholders were told that they don't fit the um, requirement or the criteria for uh, economic relief. Um, and so moving away from the traditional straw vendor taxi driver and incorporating all the others, um, all of the other businesses, the tourism linkages uh, that that uh, the TDC works with the base membership and um, making sure that we add value so that those who may suffer in a crisis have have somewhere to go. Um, the Bahamian, like I said, by Bahamian Festival that we're going to be working on and be able to launch um, soonest. And then the emphasis on training and training and reinforcing standards and introducing best practices. And of course, Bahamas Strong, um, again, uh, we need to ensure that the visitor is safe to return um, and that the stakeholders following the proper sanitation hygiene etiquette to protect themselves so that they don't get sick and we don't make them sick. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Janet. I'm sorry, uh, we are, I know we are very tight with time today because of the EM's address. So I'm trying to wrap up as soon as possible. Uh, moving on, I'm going to call uh, Mr. Craig Mortimo, the manager from TDC, to now uh, uh, share his screen so that he can start his uh, quick presentation. Mr. Mortimo. Mm -hmm. Okay, good day all. You have to share your screen? Yeah, I'm trying to set it up right now. So. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, but I can continue to talk as we yes. go through that. Okay. First, let me say that um, my heart goes out to all those persons who are affected by uh, this COVID-19. The those persons who have um, lost loved ones and um, those who are affected, um, you know, losing their jobs and everything. Uh, it's devastating to so many of us. Dr. Vic, could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Craig. Oh, okay. Because um, so we, we're saying that that this is this is a major uh, problem. Is devastating persons, and for the interest of time, I'm not gonna go over some of the things that um, um, Dr. Vic has, has said or, or already, and the janitor said. Um, but uh, just let me touch on some of the points. We know that when it comes to, to the Bahamas, uh, number one market is the East Coast. And that's from Florida going up to New York. And that's the part that's, that's totally devastated uh, by this pandemic. We realize that. Craig, your slide is still not up. Huh? It's not up? No, it's not. You have not shared your screen. 
Yep, I press shed. It's not coming out. You don't see it. Did you click on it? Yes, I did. <laughs> Maybe I can share it for you then. Um, um, I'm trying to get it now. Okay. Okay, now we get it. Okay. All right. It's a little bit better now? Yes. Okay. Um, as I was saying, in the interest of time, I will just skip over a lot of those things because Dr. Vic touched on, um, you know, the new protocols in terms of health and safety. And the watchword from 9-11, as you said, would have been um, security, safety, and the watchword moving forward would be health and safety. And so we see that. And we realize that proximity, again, is to our advantage post-COVID-19. Um, Again, because we are, we are looked at and viewed as the backyard of the United States and definitely on the East Coast, then um, they would look at us as domestic travel almost, uh, slash international travel. But we also know that familiarity. Now, whenever you're in a situation and you're stressed, uh, persons look for the familiar. You know, when you're a child, you run back home to mommy or whatever. And so if they are so familiar and comfortable because the Bahamas do have a a comfortable brand, persons will run to the Bahamas or, or feel comfortable coming to the Bahamas even under stressful con condition. Now, the perception of health and safety, that's a major part of us returning. Uh, health and safety of the guests, health and safety of the service provider. Now, that means that the perception at home for our guests have to be one of safety as well. But even before they can come into the mindset of traveling and then we need to make sure that those persons who are providing the service uh, that they must be um, feel confident that nobody else is going to infect them in terms of health and safe safety so the watchword moving forward will be health and safety you know critical uh, uh, times required critical thinking and so we not we need to start thinking um, critically about what could we do the reality is such that we can't lie down and play dead like Dr. Vic said. And even uh, on one of his slides, he said that um, uh, necessity is the, you know, the mother of all inventions, but innovations he had, and I thought that was so good. Because innovations is, is basically um, putting two or three entities together that exist, probably, and create something that's new. So moving forward, one of the new norms is that we have to think about patients. Uh, it's not going to start overnight. Uh, according to TripAdvisor, they expect it to be a slow process to grow. Now, the, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Tourism of the Dominican Republic, he, he, he is stated as saying that their tourism industry will be up and running in a short period of time. Uh, Francisco Garcia, now I'm not as optimistic as he is, but he is looking at his numbers returning back within one year, and that's really being optimistic. So we need to know that patience, we have to be patient. Bear in mind, post-COVID-19, realize, and I'm talking about the persons that, are, that come under my bailiwick now, mainly uh, the tour guides, tour providers, um, transportation providers, uh, they're in for a fight get that business, we're in for a fight. Bear in mind, the tourism industry and all in the Bahamas is in for a fight because we will be fighting against the competition within the Caribbean and there will be limited amount of travel and we want to get our fair share. So we know that this is a valuable market. And so moving forward, if you're in the tour business, you're in the transportation business, we know that there's some shenanigans that have been going on in the past. And so we need you to be whistleblowers because this is so valuable, we cannot risks losing this industry. If you cannot risk during the rebuilding process, 
to have persons that are putting in stumbling blocks. So we need you to be vigilant. We need you to, to um, police yourselves, really, because we won't be able to police you as such. And so persons um, post-COVID-19 will be looking at luxury travel or, or leisure travel as a luxury. And so coming to spend whatever little money they have, they would want top class service. They would want luxury uh, uh, service. Now, so bear in mind, social distancing would be a key part in whatever you plan in terms of your tour. Look at your tour. You know your business better than anybody else. So look at your tour now and see how you can now implement uh, these social distances uh, practices. The watch word will be minimal, minimal touch or touchless service. Uh, look at it, uh, Dr. Vic talk about family. Family touring could be an intimate um, tour. And then for grouping, you have to look at privacy. Gone are the days probably of mass tourism where you have um, so many persons um, to uh, uh, part of your, your tour, where you have to look at now quality instead of quantity, minimize touch. Again, as a business, you have to order loop. Uh, this is a military term. You have to observe, orient, decide, and act. So observe what's happening in, in the industry. Orient, realize where you're at, where am I at? What am, you know, which way to go? And decide on going that way, but actually go that way and make the changes needed to make your business successful. So your business need to be uh, flex as flexible as possible. Now, when it comes to uh, your product itself, you need to be innovative with the product and the service, in the process, with the logistics, and then with the marketing. And we, we're going to uh, elaborate on, on, on more of these in the webinars uh, moving forward. But let's just touch on one of the things that is really trending, and that is ideal for independent transportation providers and independent tour guides to get into right now. Pre-recorded virtual tours, live virtual tours, and semi-immersed virtual tours. And I want to just spend just a couple of minutes on that before I wrap up. Now, um, pre-recorded virtual tour. Could you imagine putting together a pre-recorded virtual tour? A person would be willing to stay at home because they're locked in anyhow, they're locked down, and to take this tour um, looking at the exploits of Martin Luther King Jr. whilst he was here in the Bahamas. Uh, people eat that up, really. Uh, I'm talking about the heritage market, uh, uh, the, the civil rights grouping, all of them will eat that up and they'll buy that, that, that particular tour. Or even those who, are, uh, who would want to know more about the Bahamas, uh, a pre-recorded um, majority rule tour is ideal as well. Talk about the majority rule movement and what, what took place, the suffrage movement. You can talk about that and take um, clippings or videos of various sites and then you provide the narrative. And then there's the, the live tour. Now the live virtual tour could be done in so many ways, but one thought came to mind is uh, the Bahamas Underground Railroad Connection. Again, that heritage market is growing and growing in the United States in terms of interest. So the Underground Railroad, maybe that's a tour that you can think of. And since you know your business so well, you can come up with ideas that you could sell. Now the one that I love the most is the semi-immersed tours. This is off the chain because this is booming. Let me talk about Atlanta Food Walk. There's a food tour in, court in, in Atlanta, it's called Atlanta Food Walk. And they just went out of business because of COVID-19. It took them one week to turn their business around by offering semi-immersed tour. And what they do is they package all of the ingredients for you to prepare your own meal. And then now you have to book the tour online and follow their chef on how to prepare these meals. And it's a big hit. Could you not see that happening here in the Bahamas for Junkanoo? Uh, Semi-virtual Junkanoo tour that now uh, you, you put together this package, uh, persons would buy this package, you ship it to them, and then you have a tour of showing Junkanoo clippings or in the shack as well, and you demonstrate how they should now paste these costumes. And so that would be a big seller as well. The next one would probably be a big seller is the straw tour, with, uh, um, tour where you 
send the product over and you demonstrate this on how to plat, how to make these baskets. And they're big things and they, they, they would sell. These semi-virtual semi tour will be able to do good for the cooking tour. Look at all the Bahamian spices that we have. Could you imagine now boxing them and now sending them abroad and persons um, participating in your tour on how we do crack count or how we do these other dishes and um, jerk chicken or whatever that's available. And so the cooking tour uh, will be great. So I see that as something that you can do, persons, independent tour guides definitely um, to get revenue right now because you have a lockdown audience. Then moving forward, when people are traveling, we'll have a do-it-yourself to us where individuals can come and they, they would book the tour for you and they'll do it themselves. Uh, treasure hunts, where you set up the treasure hunt, there's touchless tours now, you're thinking um, that in mind. Fact-finding self-guided tours, um, great. Geocaching, for those who use technology now, I love geocaching. So we can incorporate that into our tour where persons are using GPS as part of a treasure hunt uh, per, per se. And then one of the other tours that I think would go great is travel like a local. Where Craig, for a long time, Craig, you may travel, want to yeah. Craig, you may want to speed up your presentation. Yeah, I'm wrapping up right now, Doctor Dick. Thank you. Um, travel like a local, where persons would stay for a longer period of time, where they can hit the family islands, which are clean and pristine now as we speak, uh, and and health using health as a feature to sell that particular tour. And if persons are interested in learning how to do virtual tours, uh, Online Tourism Academy offers a course in um, virtual tours. And so uh, Janet and with Bahamas Strong and Style do the very same thing. Uh, Bahamas Strong, and I look forward to um, the next webinar where we'll go into more details uh, with this. Thank you, Dr. Vic. Thank you, thank you so much, Craig. <sighs> Okay, so uh, next uh, I call uh, is Denise Johnson uh, to give her presentation. Uh, can you first uh, stop sharing your screen? Okay, all right, Denise, all all the way to you. Sorry, I just had to unmute my mic. Good evening, all. I know that we are pressed for time, so I'll try and move as swiftly as possible. Bahamas Association of Shore Experiences is a newly formed organization with the agenda to represent the interests of the tourism entrepreneur. My name is Denise Johnson. I'm one of the board directors appointed by the Tourism Development Corporation. And so we want to be able to offer some suggestions that entrepreneurs can implement easily as we move through this post-COVID-19 strategy. COVID-19 has definitely brought much uncertainty and destruction. The consensus is that nations will starve if they are unable to come up with practical and executable ideas. We, are, we know that the tourism industry globally has historically taken hits from environmental, health, and political crises. However, the difference here is the scale, the longevity, and the containment or control of this pandemic. So let's talk about it. In this presentation, we will consider some of these topics. I'm just trying to move through as quickly as possible. The types of businesses, of course, product providers, indirect and direct service providers. Okay, so the elephant in the room is safety. My research led me to an article with the healthcare industry and with their suggestion, number one rated prerequisite for traveling is safety. Travelers made the following assertions. Entrepreneurs must now work to assure customers that they are safe to use. They must also operate with the objective of safety first, hospitality providers second. Trust is also essential and trust is derived from safety measures that are communicated well. Some actionable steps implemented in the health industry include the safety of our employees. There are two critical aspects here. 
what you do to keep them safe, and how you communicate about what you are doing. Health professionals are recommending universal masking, universal precautions, and cleaning protocols. Create an incident command center. So I used to work as a healthcare professional and in the hospital we call this risk management. This group should meet every day and everyone should have a clear role. The incident command commander should not be your chief executive officer. Each of your chiefs should be experts in the area and should possess excellent communication and critical thinking skills. For example, for small organizations, some of these roles could have could be assigned to the same person. But for larger organizations, these roles should be assigned to separate individuals supported by their teams. Universal precautions and trainings. So after the HIV epidemic healthcare, workers have been relentlessly trained to avoid contact with bodily fluids of any kind of patient. The, this kind of retraining will be needed for everyone in the hospitality industry for this COVID-19 virus. The cleaning protocols. The use of an antiviral cleaning agent on all hard services and personal protective equipment for cleaning crews. It is possible that some businesses will use UV light. Consider, consider mounting at hand sanitizers, dispensers outside and inside of rooms around the establishment and near high touch areas such as elevators. Consider putting wipes inside the rooms, tour buses, so that weary customers can perform their own wipe down of high touch surfaces. Consider placing a handout on every bed or reusable items that details exactly how the room or equipment were cleaned. Consider making cleanliness part of your identity. Make it visible on your website, on your app. Give updates on when the room or space was cleaned, what disinfectants we used, and how air filters are tested and cleaned. Be the first to market with safety as part of who you are. And also continue social distancing investigate the science of air filtration and aerosols. Reports of aerosol transmissions at restaurants suggest investments in clean air handling equipment. Indoor restaurants and businesses likened to this must be able to provide isolated seating as if they are sitting for long periods of time in an incubated dining room and having to remove your mask is a real thing. Understand and track recommendations as they develop for when individuals are safe. What we mean by that, we anticipate that tests will be developed to either prove someone does not have the active COVID-19 or has an antibody testing to demonstrate that they have had it and now are safe. This science is in the early stages, but could lead to a travel certification indi indicating that staff members or patrons is not likely infectious. Direct customer contact service protocols. Okay, this is, is a bit more in depth, but what we mean by this is some areas will need more in depth protocols and that this contact service, these contact service areas, such as spas and beauty services, as well as food preparations and other service services will need protocols in place for this type of business. Finally, communicate your commitment to a safe environment for customers and staff alike and live up to those promises. Invest in training, technology, safety. These will pay off in the long term. So to our entrepreneurs on the webinar today, try reimagining your company from a hospitality business that had safety protocols to a safety company that provides hospitality services. It is that kind of promise delivered through your staff that will encourage your customers to return. Next is innovation. Innovation can come in large or small packages. However, the bold changes that have been enjoyed by our, our number one industry will require bold initiatives and engaging public and private sector stakeholders to co-create the future of tourism in the Bahamas while attracting investors and sharing risks. Some examples include rolling out bold infrastructural projects. I've heard the term safe zone come up in the past weeks. If we will continue considering safe zones on the COVID free islands, for the new norm of tourism, then that might require establishing a blueprint of infrastructure layout for each zone. Some considerations include direct access point from direct access from point of departure, making services needs available without having to stop over to the capital, tourism businesses offering 
such as lodging, food and beverage, retails, manufacturing, health and spiritual, event planning, etc. These will be grouped and known by the traveler ahead of time. What I don't have there is the proximity to medical facilities, and this will also be extremely important. Smart technology and eco-friendly businesses, practice, and government services being readily available. Again, to our entrepreneurs, seek capital investment. The truth is our government funding alone will not be able to get us where we need to be in the time that we need it to happen. Therefore, capital investment, where it is an option, should be considered especially for infrastructural and technolog technological initiatives. Next, restructure or refocus your business strategies and operations altogether. The reality is that some entrepreneurs might find themselves having to change their business strategies and service offerings altogether. As Jana gave the example earlier, many cargo companies found themselves relying heavily on delivery services and some even extended their delivery to other businesses. Maybe the single use of the single use paper or wooden products will be requested more so that customers are not feeling uncomfortable using reusable products. And then the outdoor experiences will be preferred over indoor experiences. Use these trends to reimagine your business. Industry regulated safety and health guidelines. Businesses can seek accreditation from government approved organizations like the TDC to assure that they are meeting health standards and guests can have this, the peace of mind that vendors are not high risk. Vacation rentals are encouraged to participate for their interests and for the country's best interests to assure that we don't have a bunch of hotspots popping up. Companies should join association ratings. Um, we are finding out that TDC is um, implementing something like that for cleanliness and safety. The stakeholders that deliver on safety will differentiate themselves very quickly. Use what you have. Some companies won't have to look very far to innovate. Some examples are data. Companies have collected data over the years that they can now retarget guests. Business subsidiaries such as restaurants, hotel restaurants can now offer takeout services. And lastly, renting out vacant venues. So you have vacant spots or spaces um, that you can now rent out for venues. Government regulated projects provided, provide predictable indicators and, safe, and a safer space for capital investors to take risks. Flexible pilot projects are urged as banking institutions and government constraints might be too structured to allow new initiatives to, with experimental outcomes to thrive. It has been advised time and time again, however, with the world shutting down, these have been, you, been huge driving forces that have kept commerce alive and they are digital marketing and e-commerce. Any entity that has not implemented nor considered implementing online marketing and sales strategies have counted themselves out. Some considerations include dynamic e-commerce websites, booking engines on business websites, social media marketing and sales, banner ads, display marketing, paid advertising, email marketing, and target marketing. An example of target marketing is that stakeholders must also be able to market themselves to the domestic tourists and to countries whose borders might be opened and considered safe to travel to, to the Bahamas ahead of our number one market, which is the United States. This next, point, this next point gets a bit scary for those who have avoided developing a closer relationship with technology and that's leveraging technology. There is absolutely no way the world will go back to business as usual. We are already seeing adaptations to the use of technology and the repurposing of said technology to deliver new goals. Some examples are live online entertainment, payment gateways or cashless systems. So low touch technology like biotechnology such as human voice recognition, retina recognition, facial recognition. Dr. Nair spoke on these earlier. Entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs must now move towards low touch experiences, invest in mobile check-in processes such as kiosk and encourage people to use them even if they are standing in the lobby or ticketing area. A best case scenario would be allowing a guest to enter your building and have no physical contact with any surface outside of their room or experience. Just as healthcare rapidly adopted telehealth, so will hospitality entities need to speed up the shift to online check-ins. 
tablets versus tablets versus paper menus. The tablet plastic menus or restaurants at restaurants, they have to go. Use apps instead. Virtual reality, virtual tours of hotels and businesses, virtual bookings, virtual retail shopping, virtual experiences. These all can be implemented. Artificial intelligence like chat box and online customer service. And lastly, video call versus voice call. Use your personality to draw guests closer to trusting you by implementing face-to-face -face conferencing. So our last two focuses, export capabilities. These are for the product providers and the in indirect service providers. Entrepreneurs must be able to maximize and seek export opportunities where possible by taking the following steps. Review export potential, create your action plan, and follow these regulations. Lastly, flexible cancellation policies. We've heard this over and over again from all of our travel partners. And this is for direct service providers. Surveys from some of our travel partners indicate that flexible cancellation policies are the second highest consideration for traveling next to safety. Some recommendations include rescheduling or deferring your date the ability to cancel closer to travel date with no penalty, or implementing payment plans. In closing, draft your business continuity plans. All of the aforementions need to be taken into consideration as well as adopted into a continuity plan to outline your blueprint to establish a prevention and recovery system from future threats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, just to notify all of you that the PM is already on air. I think we, we have to stop this session. I don't think so. We can take the, we can continue with the discussion in respect of his, uh, he just started speaking. Um, I would like to request you to, to continue putting your, your questions uh, in the chat forum. I will leave the chat forum still on or continue uh, emailing. You can email research at ub.edu.bs just as the same way how you registered for this. We have all your contact. So we can continue this discussion if there are some critical questions that you need responses. So with that, uh, I would like to thank you for, for this session today. I'm sorry we had to cut short today's session because of the uh, address by the Prime Minister. So we will get back to you uh, if there is any response that, that you require. So all the recordings will also be made available to all those who have registered. So uh, Janet, if there's anything else that you want to say before we close. Um, the Prime Minister is on. Um, he, we, we have a special um, place in our hearts for Bimini, obviously, because we've been working very closely there, both the university and the TDC. Um, and so I'm very, very pleased with all of the ideas that have been shared here today. Um, this is just the first in a series that we're going to be doing. And so we invite you to tune in again and to, um, and we're willing to, to share all of the, we're willing to share the presentation um, I think Dr. Vick had said earlier um, yes. that everybody has access to, to the information that was gleaned. So thank you very, very much. Um, and we are grateful for your presence here on the uh, chat today. We were, we were oversubscribed actually. Um, Dr. Vick, had, uh, before we started, indicated yes. that there were about 163 people um, registered. And so we may need to look with talking about looking at getting another um uh getting another web platform so that we can accommodate a lot more people because obviously there's interest and uh people want to want to learn want to to, to hear about the new norm and how they can uh participate in it so thank you very much Thank you. Thank you once again, Janet. Thank you, uh, Denise, and also uh, uh, Craig for, for sharing your, your thoughts today. I, I'm sure it has benefited all of us here. So I'm looking forward for 
questions from you, if there are questions that you need us to respond, please feel free to uh, put in. I will still leave this chat uh, open for the next 10 to 15 minutes if you need to post any questions within the chat. So, so that chat will be recorded as well. And at the same time, you can also email uh, us and we will uh, ensure that your questions are responded. So please, uh, uh, please listen to the address by the PM now. And uh, thank you for this session and hope to see you all uh, in our session. Uh, most probably it's going to be next week. We'll have another session. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.